Hello friends, I'm Philip Magnus and today I am doing something a little different from a book review or a game review or a game retrospective. Today I'm looking at The Pariah by Anthony Ryan and doing what I have come to call a trope check. Trope check is inspired by my interest in tropes as well as by OSP, Overtly Sarcastic Productions, who have done many things with tropes, and they have done them wonderfully. Now, today we're looking at, as I said, The Prior by Anthony Ryan. If you would like to learn about this book without any spoilers, please take a look at my review, and don't forget to like the video. Okay, I'm gonna give you a very quick rundown of what a trope actually is. What is a trope but a storytelling device? A convention? A shorthand? One that signifies the myriad conventions within a genre? Only to, of course, be broken or used in any way that the author desires. Today I have elected to locate 11 of those in the pariah, and I suspect I might very well have to make a TV Tropes page just so I can put them somewhere other than in my blog, and people can learn about the fun ways in which these elements, these tropes, exist within Anthony Ryan's book. Now, warning, spoilers for Pariah ahead. First, title drop. Owen refers to himself as Pariah, late in the novel, in conversation with the carish spell worker known as the Sackwitch. Her response, I quote, the life of a Pariah can be as meaningful as that of a king, unquote. Ain't that the truth? Two, spirit advisor. This one is subverted. The evil chainsman who sells all women and Toria to the pit mines sees the spirits of the dead. This includes the spirit of the outlaw Hostler, murdered by Olwyn. The spirit helps the chainsman to ward against Olwyn's escape on the way to the pit mines, but only tells the peddler of outlaws that Olwyn will play a role in his death once the boy has been sold off to the pit mines. 3. Dramatic and Mask. The Sackwitch turns out to be beautiful in a manner Olwyn knows to be dangerous. Her explanation as to her disguise is that she realized that the locals, I quote, put far too much stock in appearance, unquote. For Joan darker type. Does she experience religious visions? Is she about to throw the whole social order of a Middle Ages kingdom into a ditch? Is she an action girl par excellence? The answer to all three when it comes to Captain Everdeen Corlane is a resounding duh. One element doesn't quite fit with this archetype. Everdeen has noble origins rather than churlish ones. A churl, for those of you who do not know, is, well, a feudal villager. One who has no right to land, but is, in a way, chained to the land that he was born in. Horrible system. Awful. 5. God of Darkness Captain Everdeen Corlane is motivated in her holy quest by visions. They suggest that if Everdeen doesn't take up the oaths of a knight and lead the faithful against threats against the realm, the world will be overcome by the darkness of the Malachite. Possibly subverted, it might be that the source of those visions that Everdeen is getting is in fact the Malachite. 6. Gold Digger Subverted To Loreen Dambril Mary is a duke after her outlaw partner, Deccan Skull, is captured and executed, she reveals that she merely made the best of a bad situation, rather than the arc traitor Olwyn suspected her to be. Loreen is revealed to be a woman making the best of some bad circumstances. 7. Karmic Death A common enough occurrence, most clearly encapsulated in the evil chainsman's manner of death. 8. Knight in Shining Armor. Olwyn Scribe takes up the mantle of such a one towards the end of the novel. It fits him more than it fits most knights. Wilhelm Dornmal has many of the archetype's traditional noble characteristics. 9. Moral Myopia. Lots of knights of the realm suffer from this. Unyielding champions of a rigid social regime are a dime a dozen across the kingdom of Albermain, as best exemplified by Sir Alters Lavelle. Lavelle appears just and moral. Beneath the mask, however, is hidden a power-hungry hypocrite. 10. Order vs. Chaos 
The kingdom of Albermain imagines itself to be this in comparison to its northern neighbour of Ascalia, a land of, you guessed it, northern heathens. Typical northern barbarians from the cold north who have a more martial society. In fact, let's do one more. Eleven. Barbarian tribe. The Ascalians are such a one, to a point. The trope is subverted in that the Ascalians, though violent indeed, value personal freedom in ways that contrast the inhumane feudal system of Albermain. If you enjoyed this video, or need any links to the tropes in question, I have put below a link to my blog wherein the text version of this post exists with every single link to every single trope mentioned in this video. Please share it with your friends and please press that like button, subscribe, share this with your friends. Tell me whether you've read The Pariah or not. Which of these is your favourite trope? Do you in fact have any favourite trope in terms of fantasy novels, fantasy storytelling at large? I would love to hear it. I'll see you again next time. I'm Philip Magnus, you're not. Bye!